You're listening to the Standard Podcast, eye-opening for your ears. สวัสดีค่ะโบสาวิตรีนะคะ This is We Need to Talk Podcast, podcast talk show ภาษาอังกฤษสำหรับคนไทยที่ใช้ภาษาอังกฤษค่ะ Hi, you guys. Welcome to our show once again, and thank you so much for listening. ตามธรรมเนียมของ We Need to Talk. โบจะชวนแกสของเราคุย3ประเด็นนะคะถ้าเป็นพี่มาเรียมเนี่ยโบว่าเรื่องที่ต้องชวนคุยเป็นเรื่องแรกเลยนะคะแน่นอนว่าจะต้องเป็นเรื่องของการร้องเพลงค่ะเพราะว่านี่คือนักร้องหญิงไทยที่ร้องเพลงเพราะที่สุดคนหนึ่งเลยนะคะกว่าจะถึงวันนี้เธอต้องเจออะไรมาบ้างเดี๋ยวมาฟังกันค่ะเรื่องที่2นะคะคุณผู้ฟังรู้ไหมคะว่าพี่มาเรียมชอบอ่านหนังสือมากและเห็นอย่างเนี้ยเป็นแฟนตัวจริงของมุราคามิเลยนะคะโบได้ยินมาว่างานเขียนของมุราคามิเนี่ยมีความยากบางอย่างแต่คนที่ติดใจจะหลงไหลถวายตัวเป็นแฟนไปนเลยค่ะงานเขียนของมุราคามิมีดีอะไรเดี๋ยวโบจะถามให้นะคะและเรื่องสุดท้ายค่ะเป็นสิ่งที่พูดไปก็เศร้าค่ะแต่ว่าพี่มาเรียมก็มาเล่าให้เราฟังนะคะที่จริงมันก็เป็นเรื่องที่ทุกๆคนต้องเจอนะคะนั่นก็คือเรื่องของความสูญเสียค่ะโดยเฉพาะสูญเสียคนที่เรารักพี่มาเรียมก็เป็นคนหนึ่งที่ผ่านมันมาได้นะคะแล้วก็เต็มใจที่จะแชร์ให้เราฟังค่ะเดี๋ยวเรามาฟังกันนะคะเอาละค่ะตอนนี้ก็ได้เวลาเปลี่ยนโหมดเป็นภาษาอังกฤษกันแล้วพร้อมเรื่องค่ะ Ladies and gentlemen, it would be my pleasure to introduce our guest for this episode of We Need to Talk podcast. She's one of the most talented singers whose voice and singing style is so unmistakable, and honestly, she's one of the most pleasant women I've met. Miriam Gray. Hello, P. Miriam. Welcome to our show, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. It's yes. great to be here. All right. As our show is called, we need to talk. Okay. First thing we need to talk about is your singing career. Have you right. always wanted to be a singer? Um, since I was a child, no. Um, I think I started off. I just want to be a doctor, things like that. You know, like every Little average kid, kid yes. would want to be. But yeah. um, yeah. But then one day, I just. But I mean, I always like. Activities at school. Like I always like dancing. I always like singing and all that, but never really thought I would be a singer. Really? So, mm. what sparked your interest on uh, pursuing singing as your career? Um, I joined a choir mm-hmm. when I was about nine years old. Wow! Uh, like a school choir, but um, I didn't meant to join a choir. But the teacher was like, "Oh, we were kind of down on a member." So is anyone interested? And I just kind of put my hands up, and then I told my mum, oh, "I kind of have to join a choir because I told my teacher I would, yeah. you know. So I have to keep my word, you know what I mean? So, and then yeah, so I joined a choir, and I didn't know I could do it well until yeah. I start getting like solo part, and I was like, yeah. oh man, I could sing, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty good, you know, <laughs> things like that. And then um, but then when I was in year nine. You know, it's like a turning point of what I want to do next. Mm-hmm. You know, like middle school to high school. I decided I, I want to go to one of those schools, like you know, you see on TV, like you know, performing arts school yeah. where you do dancing and singing all day. So I found a school in Australia. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Australia, and then yeah, I started like doing some serious singing. Really, never. Yeah. Re- I never really had a singing lesson, a proper. I mean, apart from being in a choir mm-hmm. and practice every day. Uh, I never really had a singing lesson until I, I started high school, year 10. That's unbelievable because, I mean, we've heard you sing, uh-huh. and it sounds like someone who has been trained. Aww. Um, have you, out of my curiosity, have you ever gone back to your teacher who, who took you into choir and thank him? Was it she or she he, is a did she? Did you thank her for discovering your hidden talent? Because yeah. I mean, I would say that you've discovered. <laughs> Your singing talent on an accident. Yeah, because it of this was. Teacher. It was completely an accident. Like, oh, I still see her. Yeah. I still see her, and I still see like the the headmaster of the school choir as well. So we're still in the same cycle. So they they're, they're watching what I'm doing, and mm-hmm. they can see that you know. And I always tell her that you know, without you, I wouldn't. 
I'd probably be a doctor. <laughs> yeah, that's such a cool moment. It's yeah. like she was there. You were there at the right place and at the right time. Of course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what about your performing art um, school after after that? Mm. When you went there, what was it like? And did you get to you know live the full experience of you know getting to perform and learn about performance all day? Oh God, yes and no. But it was nothing <laughs> like in the movies. Mm-hmm. It was nothing like on TV. You know, if you've seen a musical, Fame, yes! you you were hoping it would be like that, <laughs> but it's not because at the end of the day, you still have to do math. Yeah, <laughs> you have to do, still Science. have to. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you, and you still have to do like literature and all those things. But I love literature, so mm-hmm. which is great. Um, when I got there, I mean, when I was here, everyone's like, "You're so good. Mm-hmm. You could sing so well." You know, I was wow. Yeah, whatever. I do solo all the time, so I thought, hey, I could sing. Mm-hmm. Until I go to Australia to attend that school mm-hmm. where everyone was talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from everywhere, um, mostly Australian kids, but from from everywhere in Australia. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was a bit of a shock, really, to mm-hmm. discover that I can't sing <laughs> <laughs> because I, I was never. Train properly right. until then. Like when I start starter school and um, my first singing lesson, I was like, "Oh my god, what is this? Like mm-hmm. I can't make a whoop sound or things yeah. like that, you know." And so I have to. It's pretty much starting from zero again, from what I thought I knew. Mm-hmm. It became like, ah, oh, no, actually, no, in your face. Yeah, it was much. sort of eye opening, right? Yeah, it was. It was stressful too because. You have to push yourself to be at the same standard as everyone else, and so the first year I was there was hard work. Mm-hmm. Was completely all the time in practice room, like at school that you have like individual practice room that mm-hmm. you could use. And um, so I was go home pretty late, you know, just be there practice until like nine. Mm-hmm. At night, and then go home. Wow! Come back to school in the morning because you still you still have to do the regular subjects too, but right. only half a day. But on Friday is all all your either you're a dancer, you go dancing, do dancing, and then if you're a musician, then you do your music. Right. So on Friday is is a day where you just get to enjoy it, but every other day. Yeah, half half a day. You still have to do your homework. You still have to do your exam. It might not be as crazy as a normal school right so th- that kind of let you off a little bit mm-hmm. but it's still stressful because you still have to pass yeah do you play any other instruments i used to i used to well, i used to do drums i used to do bass but i don't know how to do any of those anymore but i had to do piano because mm. they, they were like oh your second study should be piano because mm-hmm. you're a singer so would you say that's where you picked up your performing skills? Yeah, pretty much. Cause it's, it's where I started. Well, it's not where I started. Started, but right. it's where I realized how hard it actually is mm-hmm. to do this, and I became very passionate about it. You know, of what I have to do. But by you know by the second year I was there, it's got easier. I make some friends, mm-hmm. you know, and. Like I push on my standard a little, mm-hmm. so it wasn't so as stressful as year ten. You know, year and, was easy. and that leads to your songwriting. Yeah, too, I, so right? my songwriting started before that. Actually, mm. uh, I don't write songs anymore because I, I tried, but it's not. This doesn't come as naturally as someone else. You know, right? But um. I started songwriting when I was like 13 with Pi Boy Go See Yeah. He, he had a, a little workshop that mm. I applied for. And then um, I actually got in. So I was pretty happy. And so he taught me how to write songs. And, I, and, and that's how I started singing career in Thailand. Yeah, mm-hmm. in Thailand, like before I actually moved to Australia. Ah, so okay. I was doing backing vocals around that time yeah so is that when you joined b5 no i joined b5 much later Ah. it was when i was like 20 so after school after school i was not what i was in uni Mm -hmm. i was still like i was i think was in second year Mm. at uni about 20 years old but i i came back only to do the show and then i went back to study Mm -hmm. so Every time I'm back, if you see me on stage, means I'm on holiday. Or if it's a very important job, then I took I time, off, time off. Like, time, took some leaves from yeah. school. 
Talk Sorry. about productive vacation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I, it was like I hardly had a vacation back yeah. then. You know, it's like it's like work or it's school. W- w- work or school. Work. Work. It was good. I mean, because I was doing music anyway. I was mm-hmm. doing school school music, so it was rather than doing something else. You know, rather than you know waitressing or something yeah. like that. You know, I come back and do that. But I still I still do some easy work. Yeah, in Australia, like it's like mm. your friends like yeah, I'm just waitressing um, for the summer. You're like yeah, I'm I'm just gonna go back and sing, sing yeah. Yeah. On, like, <laughs> on a big stage. You know? <laughs> so it was a good year. It was a good easy year for me yeah. in a way. But apart from tiring from like. Traveling all the time, mm-hmm. yeah. Would you say that Big Five was your big break? It was actually. I mean, I enjoy doing backing vocals and stuff. You mm-hmm. know, it was fun, and I get to meet a lot of the artists that I admire, right? Like Pause and Modern Dark, things like that. But B Five let me out on stage and allow me to express who I really am, mm-hmm. rather than. You know, being back in vocals, I have to match the voice of other people to make it more smooth. What would you say is your specialty? What What, what is your genre? I love soul music. That was my favorite, you know. And um, my idol would be Donny Hathaway. Mm-hmm. He's like a soul singer or Otis Redding. I love all genre, really. I, I try to be more vast, be more open, be more accepting of other style of music. I mean... One of my favorite artists is like Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. I love him. So, you know, so it's hard to pinpoint, but Soul would be my pick. Is that why your Instagram handle is Soul Child? Yeah, actually, it's, it's a nickname my singing teacher gave me back at uni. Aww. Yeah, because I did jazz, you know, I was yeah. at a jazz school and um, I was always like the Soul one. I always pick a Soul song. So my yeah. teacher always called me Soul Child. Oh, that's so that's, that's, that's where it came from. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. And it sticks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So currently, there, there are, are thousands of singing competitions. Yeah. And even amongst the winners, not all of them get to become professional singers. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any advice for those who, as we speak, are filling out applications for these competitions? What do they need to know or... Mm. What do they need to be aware of in order to win or to become a professional singer? To me, honestly, I've never won a singing contest ever. Mm-hmm. And I mean, back when I was a kid, there weren't that many. Anyway, there was a few, you know. Yeah. But I never win anything, literally, like mm-hmm. anything. So I think like I'm losing is not the end of the world and winning is not everything mm-hmm. because you win doesn't mean you're going to make it. Exactly. Because you lose doesn't mean you won't. So if you want to do it for fun, yeah, do it by all means. It's a good experience to meet people, to, to do things like that, you know, mm-hmm. um, to put, put yourself under pressure. I mean, it's always good. But don't forget that in the end, the race is only with yourself. You have to be better than, than yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't be better than the next person. You can't be them. You can't be better than them. Mm-hmm. You can be better than yourself right now. You can be always get better. You can always practice and, you know, and be yourself. Like, and pretty much and also, you know, your feet on the ground. Yeah. Don't get too overwhelmed with fame, success, and don't bash yourself up for not having one. Yeah. Opportunities is everything, I think. If well, I'm not sure about now, but back in back in my days, yeah. <laughs> back in my days, becoming um, a singer or an artist is half luck. Oh, you were right at the right place at the right time. I was like when I met people, I was at the right place at the right time mm-hmm. because without that, it was impossible to make a break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. So if you're filling up application right now, just you know, chill. Don't hurt yourself if you don't get it yeah Yeah. like you said winning isn't everything is isn't everything and winning doesn't necessarily guarantee that you will become a professional singer exactly and i think people get confused Mm -hmm. of what a good singer is i mean there are good singer with techniques Mm -hmm. good great techniques and all that and but in the end of the day don't forget that there are good singers with emotions too you know I don't think Joni Mitchell will ever win 
a singing competition mm -hmm. or Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. I mean, Joni Mitchell's great, but she's not like a the loud voice, you yeah. know, she's not all technical. Or Bob Dylan, you know, like imagine him yeah. on a singing contest. On I, like American Idol. Yeah, or <laughs> X Factor. I think yeah. he'll be out within 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. come out and go, hey, this feel, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yes. character, character is everything. Mm -hmm. Character what makes people remember you. Yeah. Character is, you know, what makes you unique mm -hmm. you know it's not always about technique yeah, so stay true to yourself yeah, yeah. all right next we need to talk mm -hmm. about i hope i'm pronouncing this correctly yeah Murakami? Yes, perfect. <laughs> yes, I nailed it. So I've read from somewhere that yeah. you love to read. Oh God, I do. And um, we're talking books, not just like, you know, like people like, oh, I like to read. Mm -hmm. But some people like are reading articles or like, you know, posts or like Facebook yeah. statuses. But you Facebook love it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you said earlier, you love literature. I love literature. And mm. Murakami uh, is your favorite he is right? uh, yeah um have you always been a book lover i have actually when i was a kid my my dad reads a lot and my grandma loves to read too and but my dad mostly because um he always have this reader digest books mm -hmm. at the uh, at the top of our bed you yeah. know and um back then there were no pictures in in the magazine it was just words mm -hmm. and he used to order it in port from overseas and we used to get it every month mm -hmm. and um i used to start reading from that you know word by word you know because my dad was reading yeah so yeah i always love reading i always find something to read mm -hmm. but not not much of a school textbook but yeah <laughs> i know you know when you're forced to read it and you're like no <laughs> yeah i know it's like you know back in school we had to read stuff like i don't know like 1984 or like you know like oh, I read Shakespeare that. <laughs> yeah. all of those things to be or not to yeah. be yeah and then <laughs> you're like oh man like I have to read this but now as an adult I went back and I reread 1984 and I yeah. sort of learned to appreciate it I'm like this is good no wonder they made <laughs> I it I don't know, right? when, when, when I was reading 1984 back in school it was like Big Brother is watching yeah. like what who <laughs> what and, we, we, and then we read like Animal Farm and all yeah, that you know it's, know it's so it's so like I don't know. I think it was too grown up for yeah. her or something because it's hidden messages that yeah. we have to find it's very out. Political. Yeah, it was. And now Faith. that I grow up, I went back to read it. I was like, that was easy. Why didn't? Well, yeah. Why wasn't it that easy when it was like yeah. eight? You and know? you're like, or even Catherine the Rye. Like mm -hmm. I was reading it, and I was like, oh, what? Like I had to read it. I think it's like you said because we were forced. To yeah, read we were forced them. to read it. But now I love Catherine and the Rye. I think it's it's yeah. one of the best novels um, that the school that our school made yeah. us read and i remember like i had to read like greek tragedy and all those mm -hmm, things like mm -hmm. medea where the, she burned yeah. her, i don't know burn her husband <laughs> cut them into pieces <laughs> and it's just like what is this That's thing <laughs> and i was like what 10 <laughs> it's awful oh, <laughs> but it was it's great now <laughs> but yeah. yeah but now you sort of learn to oh, appreciate the like, darker side i would of do that <laughs> no, i was like i would totally do that great one my day <laughs> yeah because murakami isn't an easy read right i mean i heard yeah. it's not for like squeamish people yeah. it's more it's a little tougher it isn't, it isn't. Like to me, it was easy. Mm -hmm. But um, for some people, I actually gave it to a friend. Yeah. And he's an architect. He has a very practical brain. So when he reads it, he was just like, that can't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's not real. I was like, no, no, very no, no. Very logical. No. Exactly. So the technique of reading Murakami is forgetting what is real and what isn't and just accepting everything as reality. Ah. So that's that's the technique of how to read his work. What what's appealing you to his books? I could connect to him. Like a lot of things that he writes, even the surreal things, mm -hmm. are things that I feel like I have experienced even as a kid. You know, certain events that I thought, was that a dream or was it real? When uh, you know, some night there was like I re I remember this one night really well yeah. where I couldn't sleep and I see things. And I was like, was this a dream or was it actually happen? Ah. You know, so Murakami writing style has a bit of that in yeah. it. Of like, you don't know whether it's real or not. Yeah. That's what I love about it. 
That's cool. Something quirky. Yep. I think a lot of our readers are probably Googling Murakami right Murakami. now. Because they're like, <laughs> I wonder, like, what, what type of literature does he write? And yeah. some you might even open up some interest for some of our listeners. I hope so. I hope so. Like, I, love, I actually love giving people books mm-hmm. to read, like, to see if they could connect to certain things, they might discover something else, you know. Yeah. And with like Murakami, it's what I would call this surreal realism. Mm-hmm. So for some reason, when I first read his book, my the first book I read, and um, I have nightmares for weeks. Really. Like constant nightmares, and um, and I became very isolated. I stopped going out. I was like very antisocial. I was just like. Just gonna stay home and read. I'm gonna finish this, and then when I go to bed, I had nightmares and woke up and start oh. reading again. It was like that obsessive. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. What? What? Do you have any suggestions? Like, let's say if someone uh-huh. wants to start reading his book, where should we start? Where should I start? Oh, uh, hey, if you want to start reading him, um, there is his um, nonfiction one. Mm-hmm. What I talk about when I talk about running. But that's a nonfiction. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking at to read to enter the real Murakami world, right. the fiction ones, um, I think the easiest one would be Norwegian Wood. Okay, but Norwegian that's my least favorite though. But it's the most straightforward. It, it, it will ease you. It will yeah, <laughs> into, it will, into into, into what comes next. My first, the, his first book that I read was the Wine Up Bird Chronicle, which is about that thick. Mm. Oh, of course you can't see me. This is about <laughs> an inch and a half, probably two inches. Mm. Yeah. Do do we have to like be mentally prepared? Yes. To read his books. Oh yes. What do like if I want to start to read his book? What do I need to do? Like, do I need to clear my mind? Like, like, do, what kind of mentality okay. do I need to be in? Clear your head. Right. Forget everything that you know about reality, mm-hmm. and that's about it. Okay. And be prepared for anything, okay. and just don't get shocked. Well, you know when things happen, just uh, just just calm down, mm-hmm. read it. Just imagine it's real. Okay. Imagine unicorn is real. Imagine certain things is real, like a couple or things like that. I believe in unicorns. So yeah, so yeah. D- therefore, <laughs> your version of reality yeah has to be open. Mm. Yeah, read it with an open mind. That's exactly right. Last but not least, we need to talk about something sad. Okay, so we're okay. gonna change and do switch we need our to talk about sad more. stuff, mommy? <laughs> I okay. think okay. So I know it's not desirable, but mm-hmm. it's unavoidable, right? Yeah. This is why we need to talk about it as sure. well. I've heard that you've lost someone very close to you recently. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience and how it shook your life and how it changed your life and um, pretty much how you coped with the loss? Okay. Um, there were a few experiences in my life where I lose someone really close to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, recently I lost my grandmother and I'm still putting my head around getting over that, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm still working on that part. Back when I was about 19 years old, I, I lost my boyfriend. Um, we had a fight and he decided he wanted to go. <laughs> so mm. he committed suicide. And um, that was hard because back then I was only 19, yeah. turn, turning 20, I think. And um, having to go through that and I still have my exams coming, you know, yeah. a lot of stress pressuring me. It, was, it was a hard time. So first of all, I, I talked to my teacher. I remember that uh, back then I talked to my teacher. I was like, yeah. you know, I... Exam is coming. I, I'm not sure if I could do it. Mm-hmm. I, you have to just accept your feeling of emotions. Don't force it. Don't force, oh, I'm okay, or things like that. Just just let, let yourself feel. Mm-hmm. If you want to be sad, be sad. I, I remember I cried for months, you know, every yeah. night. I mean, during the day, I'll be fine. I'll be like talking. But at night, I would just be like, you know, why? What, what happened? But in the end of the day, these things happen. Like, you lose people. I mean, sometimes, you know, by accident yeah. or sometimes they just took their own life or sometimes, you know, nature t- nature took it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's part of life, mm-hmm. you know. It's not the opposite of life. Death is just part of it. So we just have to accept it. And 
I think it's harder to to be here and accept the fact that they're gone mm-hmm. than to actually be be gone. Yeah. So just think about it as what do you think they want you to feel? I'm sure like with my grandma, I'm sure she wants me to stay happy and, you know, do my work and things yeah. like that. I remember like the first week I lost her, it was like crazy. I mm-hmm. was like, I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything anymore. But then I thought she loves singing. My grandma loves singing. So I was like, oh. Yeah. She'll probably want to hear you continue singing. Exactly. You know, it's her legacy, you know. Mm-hmm. She sings well and I think I sing well. <laughs> you do. But, oh, thank <laughs> you. No, but um, at least, you know, it's her legacy that she left behind for me. So that's how I try to use to get over the fact that I lost her. But it depends on how you lose them, you know. Yeah. And you just have to live your life really yeah. you can't and the most important thing is time don't stop the more time you spend grieving moping is the less time you have to be happy exactly so the more the time is lost yeah and if you allow yourself to be sad mm-hmm. for, for a little bit and then move on I, I don't mean forget them right just trying to find a space for them in your yeah. heart that you could remember with good memories mm-hmm. rather than the the losing part mm-hmm. you know that's always a good part about it so don't dwell in the sadness but yeah embrace them and like you said find a place in your heart for them yeah. don't just be stuck in one place yeah and, some people and, do that you know mm-hmm. even even with i don't mean death like even with breakups and things like that a lot of people do that mm-hmm. they just I mean, sometimes some, there's a lot of breakup where I thought, hey, you know, yeah. I miss you or things like that. But I let that happen. But I, I don't let that control my life, mm-hmm. you know, completely or, you know, because you still got things to do. You still exactly. got goals to achieve. And like you said, I think sometimes just letting yourself feel it and cry. Just cry it out. Yeah. And you'll feel so Why much not? better. Yeah, exactly. Know? Some people just like, I'm okay. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, just cry. Let 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 yourself feel. Yeah, I think it, I think that would help someone who's going through the same thing as you are, or yeah. or it might help someone who is stuck in a certain place and they couldn't. Mm. They feel like they couldn't be happy again. You and know, I feel like your advice is probably oh, helping thank them. Thank you. You know what? Like I think this is talking about breakup here, right? And um, when I was like sixteen, I met this guy. He's older than me. Mm-hmm. It was like, like, you know, such a perfect puppy love. He was so cute and all that. And then th- one day I found out that, you know, he talked to all these other girls, that, including my best friend. Oh, you dog. know, all that. But he kept telling, oh, don't tell anyone. We, and he did the same thing to them. You yeah. Know? And then he probably forget to tell one of them, don't tell anyone. <laughs> and so that's how I found out. And it was such a like heartbreak you know you remember it and Mm -hmm. it ruins you and you you act like oh i'm so ruined i'm i have this scar in my heart i'm never gonna be the same and not until like this facebook Mm -hmm. i was like it's like 20 years after that i was like i'm gonna google you yeah and then i did so i googled him and i found he has this happy family you know it's his wife and his little kids i'm like Oh, all that time. He didn't even realize what he'd done to me or other girls. Mm-hmm. And I spent all that time stuck and moping. And yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's not fair. So I, after that, I just decided, look, I'm just not going to let this thing took over me because sometimes the people who did it to me didn't they even, don't even they don't even care, care about or it. realize yeah. this is kind of he's married he's happy he's a kid you yeah. know and there here i am being single and still hurt from when i was 16 it was yeah. like it's not fair yeah so yeah don't don't dwell this section of our show is called mm-hmm. what's your take on okay I'm going to give you three topics. All right. And you're going to choose one. Ooh. And then talk about it for five minutes. All right. Five okay. minutes. <laughs> or longer. It's up to you. <laughs> five minutes is a long time. Okay. Okay. So our first topic is music streaming. Yeah. 
Second topic, Thai Lacan. Since uh-huh. you know you sing a lot of Lacan, Lacan songs. songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, third, um, third, the third topic is on body issues of Thai women, or just you know the, the beauty standards of Thai, Thai people. people. Yeah, that's the mm. third topic. Okay, I think I'll go with the third one because yeah. I mean the first, the first one I think is natural for. You know, these days technology you can't stop it. Yeah. Second, the second one, they're my clients. I don't want to say anything <laughs> bad about it. <laughs> Smart girl. Yeah. So the, the, the third one would be the safest option. <laughs> it's a body issue. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean not. I mean, and I'm not. I'm not choosing that topic because you know I'm a bit chubby or anything like a bit. I mean a bit, not or anything like that, but. I've I've seen a lot of girls much smaller than I am, mm-hmm. you know, have such a low self esteem over their image, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes they're so pretty. Just because sometimes you're not as white, or if you're too white, and like, I'm so too white, and mm-hmm. then there's always too much of something for Thai girls, right? And uh, trust me, like I've been skinny, I've been bigger than this, I've been smaller. While I was living in Australia, it's never anything that concerned me mm-hmm. until I moved back here. That's when people start pointing out, oh, do you, oh you're, yeah, you're fat, you're, things like that, you know. Things that I could not imagine someone would say to somebody in Australia. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't, you don't, I was taught not even to describe someone oh, as the fat one. <sighs> you know what I mean? Some people, oh, you know that fat girl? Or things mm-hmm. like that, you know that fat girl. Like in Australia, we would never describe. We would try to look. Oh, you know, you, yeah. know, you know, Sarah, Sarah, you know the girl with the big eyes. Yeah. You know things like that. You know, so we try to describe people differently. Yeah. But in Thailand, I was like, oh, the fat one, the skinny one, the dark one, the the light one. You know, but I mean, Western have that blonde thing that they that they oh, the blonde girl or things like that. But it's not as much as here. Yeah, it's like what's wrong with darker skin you know i think it's pretty i mean light skin is pretty too i think there's all i mean beauty comes in all all kind of size and shapes shapes and colors really and all shades yeah all all kind of shades and so if you can't see it i feel sorry for you you know because i i can when i see a girl let's say who's a lot overweight Mm -hmm. as you could see their beauty as you could see their charisma and things like that some people just do that and i could i and i see some really pretty girl with no charisma Mm -hmm. as well you know but i think beauty is not all about the outside yep and it's not all about what you think beauty is Mm -hmm. you know i've seen a lot of unique beauty and it's still beautiful yeah so i hope one day Thai people would see that. Me too. You know, and I'm, I don't even know where this mindset came from. I know, because I, I feel like maybe back in the days or something, the farmers are out in the sun, so therefore they're darker. Yeah. So people are like, oh, like if you're dark, then you're like the, the, farmer, ser- the farmers, yeah. the servants or whatever. Yeah. And it's really sad because just like you, I, I grew up in the States. Yeah. And the moment that I came back to Thailand after 10 years... Mm landed saw my relatives the first thing they said to me was oh you look a little chubby and i was 45 kilos oh that's just not chubby i was, at about, all. I was like about this I, I was actually my weight is less than what i am right now yeah. and i was like what like in america people were like oh my god you're so little you're so skinny yeah, you're, so yeah, tiny. Yeah, you're so tiny but yeah. when i came to thailand they're like it's like Exactly. Was and my reaction was like, "This is what exactly." I'm like, "What do you know?" And they're like, "Yeah, why are you dumb? I was like, "Uh, I like to go tanning." I was like, yeah. "I'm sorry, but yeah, like, have you I, heard I of like tanning? Yeah, have like, you heard of like surfing? Yeah. Be outdoors for change. You know, yeah. stop going to department store and eat <laughs> bingsu or something like that. You know, <laughs> just stop all that. Go yeah. out for a change, and you know that people who actually got sun actually get a tan. Yeah, yeah, and and I." I hope, like you said, one day that the Thai mentality of yeah. beauty will change. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of people are, you know, like the tanning is yeah. coming 
in to Thailand a little but, bit. But it's always more. trending though. Yeah. It's n- it's never something that's real. Yeah. It's because someone famous is doing exactly. it. Exactly. Someone famous and pretty is doing it. What if what if they don't? What if it's just a normal person that you know, they're just naturally tan and yeah. and and chubby, but who's the most pretty person because she's so sweet and because she's you know and a lot of that and i see that. have you seen a movie precious no oh that's about this girl who's like is amazing you know and i think she's beautiful mm-hmm. and a lot of girls that i see I, if i walk out right now go outside and see a lot of people i, I would see beauty in everyone mm-hmm. because they are they're all pretty you know even if your nose is not pointy even you know the natural face, the yeah. natural face is the gift that you get from your parents, that you get from God, you know, and, and that's why you look like you. That's why it's so, that, that, and that's why it's beautiful, you know, and I and see a lot of Thai girls just get surgeries and things like that. And they all look the same. They'll look the same. Yeah. I mean, by all means, like, I don't, I'm not against it. Right, right. You get it, do it. If, if that makes you happy. Yeah. But Be- the reason why they do it, you know, it's because they don't think, they're pretty enough, mm-hmm. you know. If if it, if you think like, oh, you know, I kind of want to, I really want to look like that, then okay, do it if that makes you happy, but not because you're not beautiful. Yeah, you are. It just you just have to see it, and it's sad that Thai society don't allow those girls to see their own beauty with their own eyes. You know. <laughs> Do we get to be a Miss Universe now? Yes, now you <laughs> Thank have your you. Wave. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love it, and it's so sincere. And it, yeah. it, you totally took the words out of my mind, my heart. You know, yeah. it's it's an issue that I've always felt that way about. When I first moved here, I have always thought I'm like I'm gonna be the first tan person who like brings tan to thailand but i mean i never did because i'm not that famous <laughs> but, um, but I, like i was like i want to make tan cool i want to yeah i want to make because m- the majority of thai people are tan yeah or like or uh, not like super white you know yeah so i want i want them to embrace what they have yeah and but yeah i never su- i never succeed it's, that, it's just but. sad <laughs> it's just sad that you have to be famous to inference yeah. something and Unfortunately, in our society today, that doesn't happen very much, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, I don't know, I just hope things change and I hope that people do see it one day. But I the funny thing is peop- a lot of people around me, they're my friends, they have this share the same thoughts, mm-hmm. but I was like, are we a minority or something like that, you know, why, why don't people see it? I think maybe pe- people secretly think it. Yeah. But they're... Too scared to accept. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Even the guys. Sometimes it's just like, oh, my girlfriend has to be like... Yeah. Really fair skin, tiny waist, you know, all yeah. that. And I'm just like, sometimes you might fall in love with something completely different than what you say that they should be. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to love, what you have in mind, it just kind of blew away. Yeah. But some people just feel too ashamed yeah. to admit that, oh, I love this girl. Just because she doesn't look like what you have, the example that you have in mind. Yeah. Yeah. True story. Yes, <laughs> guys. Yay. Yay. All right, our last <laughs> section. All right. It's called What If. I'm nervous about this <laughs> session. It was like, oh my God, what are you going to ask me? Yes, yeah, so we have a bunch of hypothetical questions here. Hypothetical. And originally we were going to draw them out and, you uh-huh. know, randomly pick them. But our producer decided that I should be the one oh, who determines. Why don't I get to pick it? <laughs> which question you get. Oh, I'm nervous. Hmm. It's like a game show. <laughs> yeah. And this is when it counts. No. It's, it's it's where it's gonna be the the decide the deciding factor whether or not you will win the crown of Miss Universe. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> oh, these are be kind. A couple of good ones. Oh, this one should be interesting. Oh. Okay. Okay. If you could invite anyone at all, dead or alive, to sing a duet with you, who would it be, and what song would it be? Wow, that's a hard question. Just not because I don't have the answer. I do, but I have too many in my head. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd say Sting. 
Yeah, because I love Sting so much. What song would it be? Oh, song, song. I would <laughs> say "Fragile" mm. by Sting as well. I was gonna say Bob Dylan, and I imagined in my head, I was like, "Do it! It's just not gonna work, is it?" <laughs> yeah, but Sting, Sting would be my pick. Uh, could you sing us a little bit? Oh, the oh, same that, that, song? that song. Yes, yeah. please. Can oh. you? Uh, we'll imagine Sting singing okay. with you. Oh, so handsome. <laughs> <laughs> um, on and on the rain will fall like tears from a star. Like tears from a star On and on the rain will say How fragile we are How fragile we are <laughs> <Woo>! Yay! <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, Thanks for the invite. Such a pleasure. Thank you. And and I've never seen this side of you before. Oh. And you know, I've seen you as the, the you mean singer, the good the side, the untouchable <laughs> singer. But thank you. Oh, thank you so I much. I really enjoy talking to you. Me too. Yay. Thank you. Oh dear. <laughs> ถ้ารู้ว่าเพื่อนคนไหนรักภาษาอังกฤษชอบฟังภาษาอังกฤษและเรื่องราวชีวิตที่น่าสนใจของเซเลบหลากหลายโบฝากแชร์เอพิโซดนี้ให้เขาฟังด้วยนะคะ Binge listen to all of our shows and episodes at thestandard.co/podcast The Standard Podcast เปิดหูเปิดตาเปิดใจเปิดโลก